In this lecture of signals and systems, we are going to see scaling operation of the continuous time signal. As we have seen earlier, the scaling operation of the continuous time signal is of two types, which are time scaling and amplitude scaling. In this lecture, we will understand the time scaling operation of the continuous time signal. We know that a continuous time signal or CTS is a function of independent variable time t and defined for all the values of the independent variable t. This continuous time signal can be represented by xt where x is the dependent variable and t is the independent variable. The time scaling operation refers to the multiplication of this time variable t in the signal xt by a real positive constant alpha or the variable t in the original signal xt is replaced by alpha t. Mathematically, this time scaling operation can be shown as yt is equal to x of alpha t where alpha cannot be equal to zero. Let's consider a system which does the time scaling. Then input to the system is xt and the output of the system will be yt which is the time scale version of the input signal xt or yt is equal to x of alpha t. Based on this value of alpha the time scaling operation can be of two types compression of the signal or time compression expansion of the signal or time expansion. Let's understand the time compression of case of the time scaling operation of the continuous time signal. Time compression. Again the time scale version of the continuous signal xt can be represented as yt is equal to x of alpha t. Time compression of the continuous time signal takes place when this modulus of alpha is greater than 1. If this condition is true then alpha will have the value range from minus infinity to minus 1 or 1 to infinity and the possible values of modulus of alpha will always be positive and greater than 1 or modulus of alpha is equal to 1 to infinity. So mathematically time compression operation of the continuous time signal can be given by yt is equal to x of alpha t where the value of alpha lies between 1 to infinity. Time expansion. Now let us understand the time expansion case of the continuous time signal. Again the time scale version of the continuous signal xt can be represented as yt is equal to x of alpha t. Time expansion of the continuous time signal takes place when this modulus of alpha is less than 1. If this condition is true then alpha will have the value range from minus 1 to 0 or from 0 to 1 and the value of modulus of alpha will always be positive and less than 1 or alpha will have the value from 0 to 1. So mathematically this time expansion of the continuous time signal can be given by yt is equal to x of alpha t where alpha lies between 0 and 1 and when this alpha is equal to 1 then no change in the signal takes place. Let's take an example and understand the two cases of the time scaling. Let's take a signal xt which has the value of 1 when the time t is greater than or equal to minus 1 and less than 0. 2 when the time t is greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 2 and the signal xt is equal to 0 when time t is equal to 3. As we have seen earlier the condition for time compression of the signal xt is yt is equal to x of alpha t where alpha lies between 1 and infinity. Let's say alpha is equal to 2 then we have to plot the signal yt equal to x of 2t. Now we will make a table for observing the different values of the signal xt at different time instants t. When t is equal to minus 2 then the signal xt or x of minus 2 has the value equal to 0. When the time t is equal to minus 1 then the value of the signal xt or x of minus 1 is equal to 1. When the time t is equal to minus 0 0.5 then the value of the signal xt or x of minus 0 0.5 is equal to 1. When the time t is equal to 0 then the value of the signal xt is equal to 2. When the time t is equal to 0 0.5 then the value of the signal xt is also equal to 2. Similarly when the time t is equal to 1, 1 1.5 and 2 the value of the signal xt is also equal to 2. And finally when the time t is equal to 3 then the value of the signal xt or x of 3 is equal to 0. Now we have to calculate yt which is equal to x of 2t for these different values of the time t. When t is equal to minus 1 then yt is equal to x of 2t which is equal to x of minus 2 and x of minus 2 has the value equal to 0. 
when t is equal to minus 0 0.5 then yt is equal to x of minus 1 which has the value equal to 1 when t is equal to 0 then yt is equal to x of 0 which has the value of 2 when t is equal to 0 0.5 then yt has the value x of 1 which is equal to 2 when t is equal to 1 then yt has the value x of 2 which is equal to 2 when t is equal to 1.5 then yt has the value x of 3 which is equal to 0 Similarly, when t is equal to 2 and t is equal to 3, then yt has the value x of 4 and x of 6, which are also equal to 0. And for the rest of the time, the value of the signal xt or x of 4, x of 5 and x of 6 and so on will be equal to 0. Now, if we plot x of 2t or yt by joining the points, then yt has the value equal to 0 for t is equal to minus 1 up to minus infinity and it has the value 1 when t is equal to minus 0 0.5 and it has the value 2 from t is equal to 0 to t is equal to 1 and at t is equal to 1.5 the value of the signal yt is equal to 0 and also for the rest of the instance the value of the signal yt is equal to 0. Now if we compare the two waveforms then we can see that the time axis of the signal yt is compressed or the time compression of the signal yt takes place. If we look at the two waveforms, then we can see that for the signal xt, the time axis exists from minus 1 to 3 and for the signal yt, which is equal to x of 2t, the time axis is available from minus 0 0.5 to 1.5. The amplitude of the signal xt is equal to 2 from 0 to 2 and the amplitude of the signal yt is equal to 2 from t is equal to 0 to t is equal to 1. So, we can say that in order to obtain the signal yt, in this case we have to divide the time axis of the signal xt by 2 and the amplitude of the signal xt will remain same. And finally, in conclusion we can say that for the time compression of the continuous time signal, we just need to divide the time axis of the signal by alpha for every instant of time and no change in the amplitude of the signal should take place. Condition for the time expansion of the signal xt is yt is equal to x of alpha t where alpha lies between 0 and 1. Let's say alpha is equal to 0 0.5 then we have to plot the signal yt is equal to x of 0 0.5 t. Again we will make a table for observing different values of the signal xt at different instants of the time t. When the time t is equal to minus 2 then the value of the signal xt or x of minus 2 is equal to 0. On the time t is equal to minus 1, then the value of the signal xt or x of minus 1 is equal to 1. From the time t is equal to 0 to time t is equal to 2, the value of the signal xt is equal to 2. And for the time t is equal to 3, the value of the signal xt is equal to 0. And also for the rest of the instants, the value of the signal xt is equal to 0. Now we have to plot the signal yt which is equal to x of 0.5t for these different values of the time t. Here, when the time t is equal to minus 2, then the value of the signal yt is equal to x of minus 1, which is equal to 1. When the time t is equal to minus 1, then the value of the signal yt is equal to x of minus 0.5, which lies between x, x of 1 and x of 0, and is equal to 1. When t is equal to 0, then the value of the signal yt is equal to x of 0, which is equal to 2. When t is equal to 1, then the value of the signal yt is equal to x of 0.5, which lies between x of 0 and x of 1, which is equal to 2. And when the t is equal to 2, then the value of the signal yt is equal to x of 1, which is equal to 2. When t is equal to 3, then the value of the signal yt is equal to x of 1.5, which lies between x of 1 and x of 2, and is equal to 2. When t is equal to 4, then the value of the signal yt is equal to x of 2, which is also equal to 2. And when the t is equal to 5, then the value of the signal yt is equal to x of 2.5, which lies between x of 2 and x of 3, and is equal to 1. When t is equal to 6, then the value of the signal yt is equal to x of 3, which is equal to 0. And for the rest of the instant, the value of the signal yt will be equal to 0. Now, if we plot the figure of x of 0.5t, or yt by joining the points then the signal yt has the value equal to 0 for time less than t is equal to minus 2 and it has the value equal to 1 
for time t is equal to minus 2 and minus 1 and when the time t is equal to 0 then the value of the signal y t is equal to 2 and it will continues until time t is equal to 4 and when the time t is equal to 5 then the value of the signal x t is equal to 1 and at t is equal to 6 the value of the signal y t is equal to 0 which means that at t is equal to 5 the value of the signal y t is equal to 1 if we compare the two waveforms then we can see that the time axis of the signal y t is expanded and if we look at the two waveforms then we can see that for the signal xt the time axis exists from minus 1 to 3 and for the signal yt the time axis is available from minus 2 to 6. The amplitude of the signal xt is equal to 2 from the time t is equal to 0 to t is equal to 2 and the amplitude of the signal yt is equal to 2 from the time t is equal to 0 to t is equal to 4. So we can say that in order to obtain the signal yt in this case we need to divide the time axis of the signal xt by 0 0.5 and the amplitude of the signal xt will remain same. So for the expansion of the continuous time signal we need to divide the time axis of the signal by alpha for every instant of time and no change in the amplitude of the signal should take place. Let me give you an exercise based on this lecture. Let's take a signal xt which is equal to 2 when the time t is greater than or equal to minus 2 and less than or equal to 0 and it is equal to minus 2 when the time t is equal to greater than 0 and less than or equal to 2 and xt is 0 for the rest of the time instants. Then perform the timing scaling of the signal xt by yt is equal to x of 1.5t and yt is equal to x of 3t and yt is equal to x of 0.6t. Watch the lecture carefully, solve the exercise problem and when you have your answer then post them in the comment section. That's all for this lecture. If you have any doubts regarding this lecture then you may ask it in the comment section. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. See you in the next one.